Hello and welcome back to Harry's Jetty Clinic. In this episode, I'm going to look at connecting two receivers together uh, for double path security of the signal in your model. This is not a video I had wanted to make. However, the number of people who are new to Jetty who have come to me asking questions uh, is rather large uh, because they get very confused by um, very conflicting and mostly out of date information on the web, either in videos or on web pages. And I have to say that Jetty is one of the biggest culprits in this. Um, the thing is, over the years, Jetty has continuously improved and updated the system and added new features to it. And much of what they wrote on their web pages, instruction manuals, or others have made videos how to do this, are now way out of date. So, little caveat here, this video is made in May 2020, so the information is correct as of that date. Like much other stuff on the web, it might go out of date as Jetty changes things. Let's have a look at what it says here as an example of how bad it can be. This is Jetty's own website. Technical support. Frequently asked questions. Come down to number eight. Two receivers in the model. Let me read what it says to you here. If two or more receivers are used in a model, just and only one has to be in normal mode. Other receivers must be switched over to clone mode. Uh, I'm sorry, that's... Uh, that is just plain wrong. I mean, it's not just, oh, you know, there is an, a better option nowadays. That's just so wrong. That's maybe, what, 10 years old? More? Um, Jetty, please, get your act together. This sort of thing really confuses people. Let's have a look at another Jetty web page. We'll go to, again, technical support. This time we're looking at question of the week. This is much more recent. Um, it's not 2020, it's late 2019. How to correctly connect a backup receiver to the REX receiver via X bus serial line. Uh, or put in plain language, how to connect two receivers together. Um, the, this is up to date and this is correct. And so what we're going to do is follow what it says here. And I'm going to show you uh, the settings on the system. Now, some people uh, still recommend always use clone in your model. Don't use double path. And that's fine. That's their opinion. Um, I do wish they'd put up a video explaining why cloning is better. Personally, I think cloning is not a good thing. What do we mean, or what does Jetty mean by a cloned receiver? Well, in the double path mode, uh, the transmitter talks to both receivers in both directions. In other words, it's getting data back from both receivers, not just the primary receiver. So it gets back the the voltage and, as you can see here, the aerial values and the data quality from the secondary receiver as well as the primary. If you put a receiver into clone mode, it's like putting a Harry Potter invisibility cloak around that receiver. It, it's like going back to the old days of megahertz uh, radios, where the receiver can hear the transmitter, but it doesn't send anything out. The transmitter is completely unaware of that receiver's existence. Okay, the point of that is that um, you can then have lots of clone receivers in the model. You know, you, can, you don't just need one, you can have two, three, four, five if you want. They can have no wire connection to the primary receiver. So you could put one in one wing, uh, your primary in one wing, and a clone in the other wing, and a clone down in the tail of the model. And it will all work quite happily, except you'll get no data back from those clones about the signal quality, uh, the battery receiver, uh, battery voltages, and so on. The huge disadvantage to cloning, apart from not getting any data from it, is that once you've put that uh, clone mode onto it, 
which you can only do through Jetty Box, and you can do it through the transmitter's Jetty Box emulation, is that as far as the transmitter is concerned, that receiver no longer exists. And if you want to now move it to a different model and take it out of clone mode, you can't do it in the Jetty Box emulator on the transmitter because the transmitter can't see that receiver anymore. The only way to get it out of clone mode is to have one of the physical jetty boxes. And that costs, I, th I think in Britain, it's about £30 at the moment. So probably a little bit more or similar in euros, um, maybe 40 ish dollars in the States. I, I don't know. It's, it's £30 in Britain. And that's the only way to get it out of clone mode. So if you're thinking of experimenting with putting a receiver into clone mode, do not do it unless you have a jetty box because you will not get it out of clone mode. Personally, I cannot see any advantage to putting receivers into clone mode. I can only see disadvantages. But, as I say, there are people out there, respected Jetty users, who say, oh, always use clone mode. That's fine. Um, I would just love an explanation from them as to why clone is better than dual path or double path mode. Right. Okay. Enough of all that preamble, I've wasted a lot of time on that. Um, I'm going to show three receivers here. We've got a, an assist receiver as the primary. I'm going to demonstrate using an older R8 receiver as the secondary, just to prove that it can be done. It doesn't have The secondary doesn't have to be a Rex. It can be the older R8. It could be an RSAT2, which is the, the typical... Uh, secondary receiver used in Europe. You don't have to have an R8 or a Rex8 or R10. Remember, every receiver, even an RSAT2 with just one little output, gets all 16 or 24 channels. So that does not have to match the number of channels on here. Okay. There's a Rex10. I've been playing with that. That's fine. That works. You can use that as a secondary. You can use an old R as a secondary. Uh, the one thing you can't use the R for is the primary. I'm sorry, I'm bouncing the camera around as I'm talking because I'm doing the hands. I'll try and hold it still. The R can be a secondary, but not a primary. And the reason is, uh, although you can set it to be X bus, it's X bus outing, it, it won't take X bus in and therefore you, it, it won't talk properly to the other things. So um, you can use a Rex or an R or an RSAT. Well, I'm sure you could even use an Assist if you wanted to spend that much money as the secondary. Uh, you can use a Rex or an Assist as the primary, but you can't use an older R as the primary. Okie dokie. But I'm demonstrating here, just to prove it, the older R can be a secondary. Now then, uh, I've also gone into displayed telemetry. I've chosen this. If you're ever in double path, do this. And I'll show you what happens. You go in here, uh, timer sensors, displayed telemetry. You, uh, I'll delete it just to show it. Add. You go into System, Antenna, use double size. If you use single size, in other words, no. It's okay to that. Let's look at what happens. You only get the data from one receiver. So choose display telemetry, double size. Yes, you'll get both receivers going. I'm going to un physically unplug the secondary receiver. Watch what happens. There, you see? The antennas go to zero and the data quality goes to zero. I'm going to plug it back in. Yep, reboot's occurred and there it goes. Okay, doke. So you can see we're definitely getting data from two receivers there. Um, to put them into this, you go into advanced properties, wireless modes, trainer, Normally, your mode would say default there, but you go down and you choose double path. You activate that one. 
you power up only the primary receiver and you bind it to there. Take the power off the primary receiver. Come down to this one, press the button to activate it, the sort of egg timer goes flashing, and now power up the secondary receiver. Don't have the primary receiver still powered up or the system gets confused about which one you're trying to do. Okie dokie. And um, I would also suggest that you change the alarm to loss of both receivers. It will default to something like loss of any receiver. Uh, and um, if you have a momentary dropout of data, uh, a transmission to any one of your receivers, you're going to start getting alarms. Um, and also, because it's defaulting to that, it's going to be beeping away whilst you're doing um, a binding of your secondary receivers because it's lost the primary because you've just taken the power off it. So my su suggestion is you go to loss of both receivers. After all, the whole point of two receivers is that one takes over if one has failed, and so I don't want to get alarmed all the time if um, I've got a complex model that's uh, just getting momentary dropouts. Okie dokie. Uh, what else can we talk about? Right. Um, you go into Model, Device Explorer, go to your secondary receiver, which is in this case is an R8, Find its serial link in this for an R. This is for an R. A Rex is a bit different. The serial link you want to set to X bus. That's going to output data. If you're in a Rex 8, you'd go into, sorry, any Rex receiver rather than R receiver. Yeah, I know it gets confusing. This is an R number EX, but if you had a REX whatever, you'd go into alternative pin config and you'd come down here and find the E ports. You might have an E1, E2. They're expander ports, which can be servos or whatever. But in an older R, you don't get that choice. It's got digital out and digital in. That is not digital data. That's a simple, very low current one or zero for a totally different thing. Um, you don't get the expander port thing. So if you've got a a Rex receiver, come in here, choose your expander port, change it to XBus. Okay, so whether you've got an R in XBus or a Rex for your expander ports in XBus, what you choose is XBus on the secondary. Now, here's where you've got to get your settings right. In the primary, you're going to plug into one of the expander ports. So you go to your alternative pin config, come down to your expander port, and you choose this. Not XBus, but XBus input backup. Let's have a look at the menu options. There's XBus. Don't choose XBus. Reason is, that's going to be trying to send out data. So now your primary and your secondary are chucking data at one another, and it's all just clashing in the middle, and it doesn't work. You want it purely to be the XBus input backup. And then it works. Okie doke. And now the two will talk to one another. How do you check that it's all working properly? Okie dokie. Um, in your advanced properties, wireless modes trainer, and at a few other places strategically, you find this. This little button here, F1. This is transmission. Press that. And here we are. You can disable the primary module, disable the secondary module, or disable transmission completely. Remember, your primary module, what it's talking about here, is the two transmission modules in the transmitter. If we disable the primary one, which has been bound only to the primary receiver, not to both, only the primary, then obviously the primary receiver goes off and you're working on your secondary receiver. If you disable the secondary module, then that one goes off and the secondary receiver will get nothing. And if you want to test your fail-safe settings, disable the transmission completely. Both modules go off. Bingo. This may be slightly different on the new Jetty DS12. That has uh, an optional extra you can buy for the double path system. But the DS12 still only has one transmission module. 
and two aerials, whereas the 16s and 24s, and I'm not sure about the 14, but the 16s and 24s have two transmission modules and four aerials. So the DS12 emulates doing double path uh, in that it can talk to a primary and secondary, um, but whether you'd get this, I, I'm not quite sure, because it doesn't have two modules. It may well do this just to help you do your range testing, uh, fail-safe testing and such like. So let's look at what happens. First of all, I'm going to disable the secondary module, which in this case is talking to the secondary receiver, which is the older R8. So I press that. It says, do you really want to disable it? I'll say yes. And if I back out of here, it's still disabled. We can see that the secondary receiver is now reporting no signal strength, no data quality, but our primary receiver, the assist, is still working if I wiggle the sticks. I'll go back to advanced properties, wireless modes, trainer. It's showing TX2 is still switched off. Press the button again, it switches it back on. Now I'm going to disable the primary module. This is the real test. If the primary receiver is knocked out, will our secondary receiver still manage to keep control of things? Okay, disable. Yes. Come out of here. Look at that. There we go. The primary receiver, which in this case is the assist that's driving the servos, has lost any signal strength, getting no data quality. But look at this. If I move the sticks, it's still working because it's getting data from the old R8 through this link into there. Even better than that. Watch this. If I can carefully swap my hands over. Despite the fact that the assist is getting no data, whatever, from its aerials, it's getting its data only through the link from the R8. It is still, can you see that? Doing its job of stabilizing. Isn't that good? So, uh, there we go. Oh, there was one other thing I must mention. I'll go back and switch them both on again. There we go. Okay. Uh, I forgot to mention it in model, device explorer, in the secondary receiver. Make sure fail safe is disabled. Do not enable it. You don't want it confusing the primary with sending valid data when it's actually been knocked out. So in your secondary, disable. And in the primary receiver, do your standard fail safe settings, whatever you would normally do. And let let your primary receiver then handle all the failsafe for you. Okay, doc. Well, I hope that's been of help and cleared up some of the the mountain of confusion that there is over what options are available, what you should do, and what the current situation is. Uh, because as I say Jetty's website is, in, if you read the wrong page, it'll lead you down a real dead end path. Um, and there are some other videos on the web. Uh, which, like Jetty's webpage, were true at the time that they were made. But it was years ago and Jetty has just moved the system on so much that some videos and web pages just haven't kept up with what's available. They were right at the time. Some of them are still correct, uh, or should I say, valid methods that work. Uh, if they're saying, you know, connect up through PPM rather than XBus. At the time they were made, they were correct, and you could still get it to work. But, again, there's a better system now, which is the XBus system. So, there you are. Take it for what it's worth.